So this is another short video on a thing which I've had to explain quite a few times so I can do it right off the top of my head without thinking too hard. Something that I encounter a lot with people when they come to visit is they'll have their first day out in the wild and then we'll meet up somewhere and they'll say, what do you do with the language thing? Do you, like if they say, you know, <laughs> trying to figure out like if they did the right thing, you know? What you're encountering is what I like to call the conversational negotiation. So that's when you have two people that speak different languages trying to figure out what language they should engage in. Here is the Montreal conversation negotiation from the perspective of an Anglophone. You come across a person and they are speaking in French. You then respond in French. If their English is better than your French, they will switch to English. If your French and English are at about the same level, the factors that will influence what language is chosen are based on things like tiredness and subject matter. So for example, if you are going to see a doctor, even if the doctor does not have very good English, they may choose to speak in English because they are familiar with the subject matter while you are feeling sick. In the end, the conversation negotiation is a compromise reached by two parties who are acting in good faith to communicate better. So you walk into a shop, and I know that there's been this whole bonjour, hi controversy recently, but people just say bonjour, salut, or ça va. Very rare that you get um, someone saying bonjour, hi. So if someone starts to speak to you in French, just respond in French. The reason I say this is because if you don't speak French, your bonjour is gonna sound so shitty, just like mine, <laughs> that the person you're dealing with will switch over to English. So if someone's like, Ooh, bonjour, and you're like, bonjour, no. They'll know. You don't have to say to them, oh, so désolé, mon français, terrible. And because if you're in the service industry, you're paid to deliver good service, if they speak English, they'll switch over. Of course, sometimes they won't speak English, but it's super rare if you're a tourist in town, you're gonna to be staying in a neighborhood that's central and it's pretty unlikely that you're going to encounter a person who doesn't speak English at all. And you know what, if they don't, they're going to be embarrassed and they're going to laugh and you're going to laugh and it's going to be fun and you're going to point at stuff, you're going to get it across, you know, this thing on the menu or whatever. Once you've lived here a little bit longer, you're going to move beyond ordering something in a bar. It's going to turn into like couriers delivering parcels and a maintenance guy wants to fix a pipe or whatever. And that's when you're going to encounter a lot less English and a lot more kind of confusing French conversations. Some sectors are more bilingual than others. So for example, if the person has like a white collar job they probably went to university for, they're probably gonna speak English. If it's some uh, maintenance guy uh, who doesn't deal with customers a whole lot, who's just been told to come around and fix your hot water cylinder, probably not gonna speak a whole bunch of English. The stakes are pretty low with most of this stuff, you know, we're not talking about representing yourself in court. The thing that I encounter on a regular basis that's most challenging is phone conversations. Because you can't read the person's facial expressions, it can be really hard to understand what they're saying. But I've found that people are hyper aware of the fact that you may have misunderstood something. So I, in situations where I wasn't sure, found myself getting a follow-up email or a text message. So I think the town's very good at being bilingual. You know, people don't want you to miss an appointment or misunderstand something. Right. I found a really interesting example of the conversation negotiation in a place that I wasn't expecting the other day. So let's have a look at this city council meeting. Bonsoir, Monsieur Gary Barnard. Hello, bonsoir, uh, Madame la Présidente. Bonsoir, la mairesse. Bonsoir, membres de conseil. Je m'appelle Patrick Barnard de la Coalition Verte ici à Montréal. Merci pour, pour votre question. Bien, écoutez, je peux malheureusement pas vous donner plus d'informations. Avez-vous une deuxième alors, question? On, on, on attend les détails. Euh, Est-ce qu'on est qu a dans, dans, dans nos conceptions l'idée d'employer les terres vagues, ce qu'on appelle en anglais « brownfields » Parce qu'il y a beaucoup de brownfields à Montréal euh, qui peuvent être employés par euh, les promoteurs. Merci pour votre question, Madame la mairesse. Pourquoi vous avez envie d'avoir plus de, de... You want to know everything, and I get it. Uh, again, I'm not going to be sharing more. Um, the fact that we are, we decided to invest within our budget 
60 million dollars. That in a nutshell is the conversation negotiation. We have two parties that speak the different language, figure out based on the level of fluency of each person and how tired they are and what the expectation is for service, exactly what language that they should use. The rules are not very clear, but generally speaking, as long as everyone makes an effort, it all works out pretty well. So I hope this was pretty quick and helpful for you. You see it going on every day here. Uh, it's not a big deal and I guarantee you after a couple of weeks, it'll kind of become second nature. Anyway, have fun out there.